Hello everyone, I am Vaseem Abbas, Manager Coordination from Asker Education System. So we are here once again after the summer vacations. So I was uh, quite waiting for this session along and uh, uh, so we have our uh, British uh, native teacher, Miss Donna, with us. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, to the Learning English 365 team as well that they spared the time and arranged this session first. So Miss Donna, you are the presenter now. So hand it over to Miss Donna, please. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the um, slight delay there. That was a few technical issues at my end with the app. Um, okay, just bear with me. I'm just going to um, share my screen with you so we can start the session. Okay, everyone, hopefully you can see my screen now. Yes, we can see the screen, please. Good. Okay. So today we're going to um, talk about your daily routines, the things that we do every day. As always, I will start by reminding you that um, this session is a demonstration session. So the, um, some of the words you, you may already know, some of the grammar that we, we cover, you may already know. If you were in a classroom, and this was a classroom for you, and it was lessons for you in particular, then the class would be tailored to your needs, to your level, and to your learning goals. Okay, so please remember that this is a demonstration class. Okay, so your daily routine, let's get started. Have a look at Sarah. Welcome Sarah to our lesson. Okay. We've got some pictures that show us what Sarah does for a living, what her job is, um, and what she probably does in her spare time. We've got um, a picture of a horse, somebody riding a horse. We've got somebody doing yoga. We've got a clarinet there. And we've got sort of something, you know, it looks like a holiday destination. So having a look at those pictures, what do you think Sarah's job is? What do you think she does for a living? Well, it looks like she's holding something, isn't she? She's in a laboratory of some kind. So, yeah, she's probably a scientist of some description, maybe a chemist or something. And, yeah, she um, probably works in a laboratory or a hospital or maybe a university. Yeah, something like that, isn't she? What do you think she does on the weekend? Having a look at those pictures. I think she goes um, horse riding on the weekend. She probably also does yoga. And maybe she plays the clarinet or practices the clarinet or attends music lessons. And what do you think she likes to do in her free time? This picture at the top, this nice picture of a nice blue sky and a swimming pool. I think we can say that she likes to travel in her free time. She likes to go on holiday. She likes to relax when she's not working. Okay, some questions now about you. Now, this is your opportunity to practice um, saying some sentences about your daily routine to the people that you're sat with now. So, what is something that you always do? What is something that you always do? So, I always do, do, do. For me, I always drink coffee in the morning. What is something you do in your free time? What do you like to do when you're not studying?
for me, I like to go scuba diving when I have the opportunity to do so. What do you do on the weekend? Um, I like to visit my friends and family on the weekend. I see that today it's the weekend and I am working and you are studying. What do you generally eat in the morning? What do you have for breakfast? Do you have anything? Generally, I eat fruit in the morning and yogurt, what I like to eat for breakfast. What are the things that you do at least three times a week? What do you never do after 10 p.m.? And at what time do you wake up in the morning? Do you wake up at different times depending on the day of the week it is? Can you answer all of those questions about yourself? Okay, we're now introduced to Matteo and Lena. Matteo at the top. We've got some sentences that describe Matteo's daily routine. And we have some gaps in those sentences. And your job is to fill in the gaps with one of the four words that's at the top here. So you've got four um, verbs and you've got four gaps. So which verb goes in which gap? The first one we have, I beep five days a week. Is it walk, go, work, or start? Hopefully you're all shouting at me. It's work. I work five days a week. I usually work at 9 a.m. Walk, go, or start. Start. I always beep to the office. Hmm, is it walk or go? How does he get to work? I walk to the office. And generally, I go. The last one home at around 7 p.m. Well done if you got all of those correct. Okay, now let's move on to Lena. Okay, same, same exercise. We have some statements about Lena's um, daily routine and habits, and we need to fill in the gaps with a missing word. So on Saturday, I what? Swimming training from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. Go, eat, play or have. Swimming training. The answer is have. On Sunday, I watch basketball. She doesn't eat basketball, does she? I play basketball. I often to the cinema with my friends on the weekend. It's quite straightforward, isn't it? I'm sure you all know the answer is go. And we also usually eat at a pizzeria after the film. See, that was the last one. Just 
a review and a reminder for you about how we use the present simple tense when we talk about habits and routines in English. And you have the form of the verb there to remind you. The most important thing to remember is he, she and it. Don't forget the S or the ES, IES, whatever the ending is. But he, she and it, they're different to the rest. Okay? This is, a, this is a, an error that people often forget. And when they're writing or speaking, this is what they often forget, the extra S. Okay? Make sure that you always remember it. And you can see some adverbs that we, we generally use when we're talking about habits and routines from often through to never. So we have often, generally, always, usually, sometimes, and never. We often use those when we're describing our, our routines, our habits, the things that we do on a regular basis. Have a look at these pictures. You've got four pictures on your screen showing people doing different things. These are all things that the people do in their spare time, in their free time. What do they do? What habits do they have? See if you can work it out and make sentences. Tell us what the people are doing in each picture. What do they do in their spare time? Well, A, this lady here, she reads books. The picture shows that she's reading. So what does she do in her free time? She reads books. And she's outside, isn't she, somewhere? So maybe she reads books in the local park. Something like that. B. What do they do in their spare time? Do you know the sport? This sport is ice hockey. Ice hockey. So they play ice hockey in their free time. C, got a man there and where is he? Well, it looks like he's at a football match, doesn't it? So what does he do in his free time? He goes to football matches. And D, this, this little boy here, what does he do in his spare time? Well, what's he, yeah, we, can we see the screen? So there's more than one answer here, isn't there? Maybe he watches television in his free time, or maybe he plays computer games in his free time. Okay, we're going to listen to a recording now. And this uh, boy here, you can see in the screen, is going to speak. He's going to talk to us. It's a very short recording, this first one. And we need to say whether the statements on the screen are true or false. Are they right or are they wrong? So he spends a lot of time on the internet. He plays basketball. He plays ice hockey in winter. Which of those sentences are true and which of them are false? Let's listen and find out. I buy a lot of computer games. I usually buy them 
buy a lot of computer magazines too. I spend a lot of time on the internet and uh, I play sports. I play basketball and football. Sometimes I play hockey, but uh, I only play hockey in summer. Okay, did you get that? First one, he spends a lot of time on the internet. Is that true or is that false? Well done if you said true. It is true. Number two, he plays basketball. Is that true or is that false? It's true. He plays basketball. And did you get the other sport? He also plays football. And number three, he plays ice hockey in winter. Is that true or is that false? It's false. He does play hockey in the summer. He plays hockey in the summer, not the winter. Well done if you got all of those correct. Okay, slightly different listening exercise now. We've got um, some information about Benjamin. Okay? Benjamin is telling us about his daily routine and about his habits. And we're going to listen and we're going to fill in the gaps in the text as we listen, okay? So we've got four gaps in the text. So let's have a look at it and see what the gaps are before we listen. I'm busy during the week, so I don't do a lot after work. At night, the week I watch TV. I live with my sister, so we usually cook dinner together. We order a pizza or something else. We both like detective series, so we watch these. Some nights I go to the cinema. Mm. Could you guess? What words go in which gap? Maybe, maybe you can. Let's listen and see if you are correct. I'm usually busy during the week, so I don't do a lot after work. At night during the week, I watch TV. I live with my sister, so we usually cook dinner together. Sometimes we order a pizza or something else. We both like detective series, so we watch these often. Some nights I go to the cinema. So, that's Benjamin. Did you get, did you hear the words that fit each gap? The first one, I'm usually busy during the week, so I don't do a lot after work. The second one, at night, during the week. The third one, Often or sometimes we order a pizza. It was sometimes. And so the last one is often. Again, excellent if you got all of those answers correct. Okay, we've got slightly, another slightly different listening task for you now. Let's have a look. We've got a table here okay, that shows the days of the week. And we've got question marks beneath every day except Wednesday. And on Wednesday, it says no sport. So our job is to listen to what the speaker says and fill in the table to show what the speaker does each day 
and at the weekend. We've got some pictures here that may or may not help us. We've got a basketball there, we've got a football, and we've got something that looks maybe like, um, what do you think? Swimming, maybe? Let's listen and see what the speaker does in their spare time. I love sports. On Monday evenings, I train at the soccer club. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have swimming training at Regent Park. On Friday, I usually play a friendly game of basketball with my friends at the local sports centre. And on the weekend, well, I have more swimming practice. Oh, it's quite quick, that one, isn't it? He does speak quite quickly. Did you get, did you get it? Did you get all the answers? So what, what does he do on Monday? He told, told us that he trains at the soccer club. So yes, he plays football on Monday. On Tuesday and Thursday, he said he does the same thing on Tuesday and Thursday. Did you catch it? He has swimming training on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So he goes swimming. What does he do on Friday? He told us that he usually plays a friendly game of basketball with his friends. So yes, on Friday he plays basketball. And at the weekend, he told us that he has more swimming practice. So yes, he goes swimming at the weekend. It's a very busy sports week for this man. He only has Wednesday off. Okay, we've got another listening now, really testing your ears today. We're going to listen to Leslie speak. Tell us about his routines. Again, we have some statements with gaps in them. And our job is to um, fill the gaps in. This time, we don't have a choice of words. So we, we're going to have to really listen carefully to make sure that we pick up the words that um, fit each gap. But before we do that, as always, we preview the questions to see if we can think of any words that might fit the gaps. The first one. I read a lot. I like what? Especially historical fiction. I enjoy stories about people. I don't watch TV much. You've got some ideas what might fill those two gaps? The second one, I am quite, I draw, I paint, and I also make sculptures from clay. When I have time, I visit art galleries. Hmm, what word could fit this gap? Got any ideas? And the last one, but I too, I belong to a gym and I go there three times a week. Okay, so let's listen and see what Leslie says about all of these things. Listen out for the missing words and make a note of them. I read a lot. I like novels, especially historical fiction. I enjoy reading stories about people. I don't watch TV much. I am quite artistic. I draw, I paint, and I also make sculptures from clay. When I have time, I visit art galleries, but I keep fit too. I belong to a gym and I go there three times a week. So, 
did you get that? And I have to apologize to Leslie because I referred to Leslie as he. And it's not he, is it? It's she. It was the spelling of the name that uh, made it wrong for me. Um, okay, so the first one. I read a lot. I like, what did she say? The word she used was novels. Novels. Of course, you could always also say another word you could use is books. A novel is a book, isn't it? A novel is a fiction book. It's a story book. I enjoy what stories about people. She said reading stories about people. I am quite... What adjective did she use to describe herself? She said artistic. I'm quite artistic. And that's a word that we use to describe people like Leslie, who like to draw, or like to paint, are, are very good at it. We, we refer to them as being artistic. And the last one, she says, but I keep fit too. I belong to a gym and I go there three times a week. So any sport that you do in your spare time, it's helping you to keep fit, to maintain your health and your fitness. Earlier, we looked at some adverbs, didn't we, that we always or generally, usually use when we're using um, the present simple to talk about our daily routines or our regular habits. And we've got those adverbs again on the screen at the bottom. Okay. We've got never, rarely, sometimes, often, usually, and always. And you can see they're on a scale from 0%, 0%, with never, to 100%, always. And in the middle, we've got sometimes at 50%. Yeah, it's not definite, you know, it's not that, it's not strict, 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 50%, but, you know, sometimes. It's sort of, generally, it's in the middle. And we have other words that go between the, the, uh, the two extremes. So between always and sometimes, we've got usually and often. And you can see from the scale how they fit. Usually is a little bit more than often. And next to never, if you do something, you know, maybe once a year or once every two years or maybe twice a year, you might use the word rarely. You know? So I rarely bake a cake. No, I do it, I do it but only maybe once a year, maybe for a birthday, my friend's birthday, I bake a cake. So it's something I do rarely. So have a little practice using these adverbs to talk about yourself with the people that you're with now. How often do you watch TV? How often do you read novels?
How often do you use the internet? How often do you go to the cinema? And how often do you play sports? And when you're asking those questions and answering them, think about some follow-up questions. Or think about how can I expand my answer? How can I give more information? So for example, if someone said to me, how often do you go to the cinema? I can say, uh, actually, I rarely go to the cinema these days. But when I do, I like to watch comedy films. Or how often do you play sports? So someone might say, um, oh, I play sports every weekend. I go football training on Saturday and on Sunday I play basketball, for an example. So every time to really practice your English, every time you ask a simple question like this, think about what other information you can give. Okay. It really does help your fluency. For some other questions, think about what do you always do in the morning? I told you earlier, I always drink coffee in the morning. I do other things, obviously. I always have a shower. I always brush my teeth. What do you rarely do? during the week if during the week when you're studying or we're working often our lives are different at the weekend than during the week so what are the things that you rarely do during the week and for me I rarely meet my friends during the week And what do you usually do on Saturday morning? So for me, my answer would be I usually go shopping on Saturday morning. So to practice this, I would really like you to think of some questions that you can ask about people's daily routines. And I'd also like you to think about how you can describe your own daily routines. And practice saying it out loud and practice writing sentences that describe what you do and how often you do it. Okay, let's have the next exercise. Okay, so this time we're going to listen to two people talking. Okay, it's going to it's a conversation, and it's a, a man and a college student. Okay, and the man is asking questions, and the college student is answering them, and the questions are all about his free time. As always, we're open to the, um, the listening track one, so you have to listen very carefully. Let's have a look at the questions first so we know what we're listening out for. And as we do this, try and think about what the possible answers might be. That really helps you focus your listening. So number one, when does the student exercise? How often does he see his friends? Number three, 
When does he eat at restaurants? And number four, how often does he use the internet? So what possible answers might there be to those questions? What do you think? Let's have a listen and see what he says. Excuse me, my name's Raul Gutierrez. I'm doing a survey about college students on their free time. Sorry, a what? A survey? Well, a questionnaire. I want to ask you some questions about your free time. Okay, sure, fire away. During the week, do you exercise? Yes, for sure. I take care of myself. Do you usually exercise in the morning or at night? Usually I exercise in the morning. I like to exercise before work, so generally around 6.30 a.m. How often do you meet your friends? Hmm, well, not so often. These days I'm really busy. Some of my friends now study in other cities. So, maybe once or twice a month, but I generally see my best friend Mike at least once a week. How often do you eat at restaurants or cafes? Well, I never eat at restaurants during the week, but I often eat at local restaurants on the weekend. Okay, great. And my final question. How many hours per week do you watch TV or use the internet during your free time? I guess like everyone, I use the internet very often, but I don't know for how many hours each day. Maybe two, maybe three. Do you watch TV? Not really. I turn it on now and then, but I rarely watch an entire TV program. I find TV boring. So, did you get all the answers? The student gave us lots of, of extra information, didn't he, about himself. Okay, so, that illustrates what I just said about always trying to add um, more information when you're asked basic questions. Okay, so number one. When does the student exercise? Did you get the answer? He said he exercises in the morning before he goes to work. And the time, he said, did you get that? He said generally around 6.30 a.m. That's very early, isn't it? Um, number two, how often does he see his friends? He gave quite a lot of information about his friends, didn't he? How can we describe how often he sees them? He actually said, not so often. Not so often is the same as not very often. So he sees them, but not all the time. And there were differences, weren't there? He talked about his best friend, who he likes to see uh, once a week. And then his other friends that are now moved to other cities. So he doesn't see them um, that regularly anymore. When does he eat at restaurants? He told us he never eats at restaurants during the week. But he does eat at local restaurants on the weekend. Yeah, there get we go, the difference between the week and the weekend. And number four, how often does he use the internet? What did he say? The question was also about the TV. Did you get both of those? The internet, he said, maybe two or three hours each day. He wasn't sure, was he? So he sort of estimated it. And he said he, he doesn't really watch TV. And why? He said because he finds it boring. So for each of those questions that the student was asked by the interviewer, what would your answers be? 
When do you exercise? How often do you see your friends? When do you eat at restaurants? And how often do you use the internet? How would you answer those questions about yourself? So this time we're going to listen to the recording again and we are going to decide whether the statements on the screen are true or are they false. Now, some of these you may all you may remember. Some of them you may not. So let's have a look at the statements. The student exercises early in the morning. His best friend is called Mark. The student eats at restaurants on the weekend. He uses the internet two or three hours each week. And he doesn't watch a lot of television. If you think you know the answers, then check that you're correct when we listen to the track again. And if you missed it the first time, listen carefully to see if you can hear it this time. Excuse me, my name's Raul Gutierrez. I'm doing a survey about college students in their free time. Sorry, a what? A survey, well, a questionnaire. I wanna ask you some questions about your free time. Okay, sure, fire away. During the week, do you exercise? Yes, for sure, I take care of myself. Do you usually exercise in the morning or at night? Usually I exercise in the morning. I like to exercise before work, so generally around 6.30 a.m. How often do you meet your friends? Hmm, well, not so often. These days I'm really busy, and some of my friends now study in other cities. So, maybe once or twice a month, but I generally see my best friend Mike at least once a week. How often do you eat at restaurants or cafes? Well, I never eat at restaurants during the week, but I often eat at local restaurants on the weekend. Okay, great. And my final question. How many hours per week do you watch TV or use the internet during your free time? I guess like everyone, I use the internet very often, but I don't know for how many hours each day. Maybe two, maybe three. Do you watch TV? Not really. I turn it on now and then, but I rarely watch an entire TV program. I find TV boring. Okay. I think of all of those, maybe number two is the trickiest. Let's see. So number one, the student exercises early in the morning. Well, yes, we know he exercises at 6.30, doesn't he, generally? So, yes, that's true. 6.30 is very early in the morning. His best friend is called Mark. Did you pick that up? The answer is false. His best friend isn't called Mark. He's called Mike. It's not Mark, it's Mike. Number three, the student eats at restaurants on the weekend. That is true. He uses the internet two or three hours each week. Number four, that is false, isn't it? Because we know it's two or three hours, but it's not each week, it's each day. And he doesn't watch a lot of television. The last one. Yes, that's true. Yeah, he said he finds it boring, as we saw. So he doesn't watch a lot of television. Okay, then, everyone, that is the end of the class presentation. I hope you found some of that useful. I will uh, repeat again. This is, this is good, useful exercise for you um, to practice talking about yourself, your daily routines, what you do always what you never do and all of those steps in between how can you answer questions about your habits 
and the things that you like to do in your free time? And how can you add that extra information okay, to practice your language, but also to communicate properly with the person asking the question? Give detailed information. Often when we are doing exams, particularly speaking exams, the examiner will ask you these types of questions to help you settle in, settle down into the exam, help you relax a little bit. So it's always worth spending some time practicing them, you know, how to answer the questions. Making sure your pronunciation is correct and that you're pronouncing the, the verbs and, and putting the verb endings correctly. And also practice asking the questions. How would you ask questions? If you met someone for the first time, what questions would you ask them? Practice saying them out loud. It will really help you when you actually come to a real situation, you meet someone for the first time. Okay, everyone, I will stop sharing my screen now and Hopefully, you can still see me. So, for me, I will say uh, goodbye to all of you, and I hope to see you in a classroom very soon. Masalem. Thank you very much, Miss Donna, for another impressive lesson live from UK. And uh, I'm thankful to the principals, to the teachers, and to the students who, uh, who attended the lecture today. And uh, thanks a lot to the team of Learn English 365. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice weekend. Thanks a lot. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.